okay so uh, welcome back i uh, glad everything is uh, you know functioning fine let's pray and get started for this morning's class heavenly father we thank you for this time lord and father we pray that you'll continue to teach us continue to um, strengthen us and equip us in your ways father lord we ask for the presence of your holy spirit to take over and uh, lord we we pray that each one of us will hear the voice of the holy spirit lord we commit ourselves into your hands in jesus name we pray amen so in the last class we were uh, talking about the right foundation for prayer and uh, we said that you know we must have the right attitude which is what is more important rather than the right words which we may use in prayer and you know we we looked at several um, key things uh, that we must ensure in our uh, right foundation of prayer i'll uh, read it out for us quickly so that we can you know continue from there so uh, these right truths in our prayer life is to understand the nature of god to uh, have intimacy with god to understand the redemptive heart of god the promises of god uh, to be able to partner with the holy spirit recognize our position in christ and a life of surrender so these are the keys that we uh, were looking at and we did not complete all the keys we had finished key 5 where we said that we need to partner with the holy spirit and i remember sharing with us that the holy spirit will give us the strength we need to intercede and to pray sometimes we depend on our own capacity we depend on our own ability our um, will power to stay in prayer and uh, uh, that is not sufficient isn't it uh, but the holy spirit can aid us or help us in continuing prayer so prayer can be different kinds of prayer um, uh, and especially when it comes to intercession when we are praying for others when we are praying for the lost or we are waiting upon the lord for the fulfillment of certain promises which have been spoken over our lives our natural tendency would be to just give up however we have the help of the holy spirit uh, and we saw how he is the spirit of supplication and the spirit of grace we also saw that one can pray in the holy spirit okay in the holy spirit is to pray in an unknown language which is praying in tongues and this kind of a prayer is also when you look at romans chapter 8 it says the spirit helps us in our weaknesses so there are times that uh, you know we don't know how to pray we don't know how to pray in the will of god okay? we don't have the uh, words to express the things which are on our hearts but in these moments the holy spirit helps us in our weaknesses okay so that's how the holy spirit and praying in the language that the holy spirit gives us um, you know helps us now we have an entire chapter to do with praying in the holy spirit you know what does it mean how to pray all of that so i won't go into you know examples but we can pick up the examples when we go to that particular chapter and moving on to the next point here point 6 is our position in christ and uh, i think i have stated a couple of examples when i was talking about understanding the nature of god as the right foundation for prayer when we know that god is our father when we know that you know he has already made a covenant with us you know a covenant is an unbreakable promise so his covenant of protection his covenant of healing his covenant of provision so we are recipients of that covenant so you understood that god is a covenant keeping god so when we know that in a difficult situation instead of saying is it god's will we we'll immediately say i have a covenant with god god will do this for me you know so understanding the nature of god strengthens us in that way but also understanding our position in christ is equally 
important so in christ jesus um you ha you are studying about your identity so in that you know you must have recognized by now that uh, you are a child of god okay? and you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places so there is nothing no good thing that god will withhold from us so when it comes to prayer if we have the wrong foundation uh, it's like a protest isn't it so we think we can pray if we pray hard enough if we pray loud enough you know if we pray long enough god has to relent in hindi they say bhook hartal right so you do, you fast you you just stand before the government office uh, you make a noise with the hope that some day one of these days the officials will listen to us and they will give us what we want but that is the wrong idea when it comes to prayer so just because i am good at prayer or i can pray so much god will answer it doesn't work like that god answers because of who he is god answers because of his word god answers because it is in his will god answers because we are his children we are redeemed we are now born again we are in christ jesus and when we ask things which are uh, in the blessing of the cross he already wants to give it to us so god is never surprised when i say god i want you to lead me i want you to help me fulfill my purpose for my life no god will not be upset with such prayers because we understand our position in christ jesus and we recognize that as a child of god this is something god has already given to me so i'm taking it but when i have the wrong understanding of my position in christ jesus that's where you know the begging comes in where we say please god please 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 you know if we do that maybe god will be like oh poor child let me have some mercy let me show some grace i'll give you what you want because you're so desperate okay so we don't have to do that when we know who we are so it's very important for us to develop i said earlier the image the image of god when i say image i don't mean a picture i mean in my head who do i think god is god is gracious god is merciful god is almighty uh, you know uh, god is good god is powerful so i can use all of these uh, maybe in my revelation that's how i've understood god god is a provider god is a healer so if someone comes to me who's unwell i won't take a second to wonder is it god's will to heal immediately i'll pray for them for their healing because i know that in god's nature who's he he's a healer it's very simple so when we know his nature and we know who we are prayer comes very differently from our mouths so that's why our position in christ needs to be understood we don't have to beg god for what he has already promised in fact god is pleased you remember when the centurion came to jesus and he said only say a word was jesus impressed he was very impressed because the centurion was a gentile and even though he was outside of the covenant he understood the meaning of covenant and authority and he told jesus just say a word my servant will be healed so jesus was very impressed by that prayer and he went ahead and healed the servant and the same is true for the um a syrophoenician lady who came to jesus and who wanted uh, her child to be healed her child was being oppressed by demons and uh, when she came what did jesus tell her the the children's bread it cannot be given to the dogs now just imagine if some, if jesus tells us that we go to him and we say okay jesus i want you to do this and he tells us the children's bread cannot be given to the dogs we will be so offended we feel i took the bus i took the flight i came all the way to ask jesus for help and he is telling me first of all that he can't do it second he's calling me a dog what will you think 
you would be so upset but she understood who he is and strange because even she was not part of the covenant but she had the revelation of what the covenant meant so she was you know also uh, not a jewess but she said lord even the dogs eat the crumbs she just knew some of these laws and you know spiritual laws and uh, uh, all of that and what happened jesus immediately said oh i haven't found this kind of faith anywhere okay now i'm going to heal your child even though she was outside the covenant she received it not because she said please 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 god please i'm desperate desperation is good but knowing our position so she was not even in christ and she received how much more we who are in christ jesus so when we know our position uh, yes there will be times when we really want god to do something but we will pray from our understanding of who we are and not you know like uh, uh, begging god as if we are trying to change his mind okay so does it make sense uh, are you able to understand what i'm saying so knowing our position is very important uh, similarly for our uh, online students here i hope uh, you know you're able to get the point then if there are any questions please feel free to um, drop it here in the chat from time to time i'll be looking at it so i'll make sure i answer your questions okay coming back to the seventh key um, as far as the right foundation is concerned in prayer is a life of surrender now one can go by all the laws and the principles uh, and expect god to respond and expect all of these to work out okay however we have to recognize that god also has an expectation towards us if we are not living a life of surrender okay if we are just living a life for our own sake and using the principles of god's word you know for our own um um whatever our own benefits we are being self willed we want all the good from god's word but we want to apply it for the kind of life that we want that's not going to work out for a powerful and intimate and an effective prayer life because what happens you start praying outside the will of god eventually so surrender is very important what is surrender anyone what do you think surrender is what is surrender dependence okay depending on god that's right depending on god any other understanding of the word surrender okay give everything commit everything to god okay that's that's right yes any other understanding of surrender yes okay so let go of our uh, desires and you know our goals and all that that's right okay so we have uh, an answer here giving ourselves fully that's right so surrender is all of what you all said okay so beginning with dependence dependence on god so if i'm living my life for my own sake there's no need to pray because i can do it and you know it it's as per what i want but when i have a, a dependence on god that's when i will invite him into every situation even if it seems easy even if i feel like hey i've done this so many times and uh, i i can make it happen another time yet and i'm depending on god i'll say you know god i surrender i need you to work in my life so when we see the example of the lord jesus he said uh, in in the word that without the father i cannot do anything i can do nothing without the father and in the same way in john chapter 15 where we are invited to depend on god uh, in verse 5 he says without me you can do nothing so we can do nothing you know without god and which is why we have to uh, submit everything to god depend completely on god 
as far as things in our life are concerned. So uh, God expects that surrender without giving everything over to him. You know, we want him to come and do uh, you know, things for us. It won't work. A classic example will be you know, when God said uh, in the case of like Saul and David, God said this, that he looks for obedience and not sacrifice. When Saul was you know, trying to offer sacrifices to the Lord, that's not what God wants. He wants our obedience. He wants us to completely give of ourselves to him. Uh, and um, you know that is his expectation. So when we surrender in such a way, we also have the privilege of a conscience you know, which supports us. Let's say that I've given you know, my life to Christ. And then from then on, I choose to live a life of surrender. So when I'm walking in God's ways and I'm praying according to God's will, do you think I'll have confidence in prayer? Yes or no? I'll have great confidence in prayer because I have given everything to God. Otherwise, what happens, you know, there, there, I don't know if you have experienced it uh, initially, like when um, people are believers, they have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. And at those, in those moments, somewhere our, our own conscience will be condemning us. Even though we're asking for the right things, we're praying for the right things, we feel that sense of, um, you know, like a tug in our spirit where uh, we are aware, hey, you shouldn't be doing those other things. You have not completely surrender your, surrendered your life to God. And you know you want God to do all this. So when our conscience is not at a place of rest, when our conscience is condemning us, in those times, we cannot have confidence in our prayer. So that is why a surrendered life, a righteous life, is very important. Okay, otherwise I can go by the book, meaning whatever the Bible says, okay, I will do what the Bible says. But my own life, there are things which I have not dealt with. And those things, my conscience will not leave me, but it will keep reminding me, hey, this is not according to God's word. This is not according to God's word. Then uh, it's, it's a very dangerous place to live our lives where we are uh, living for God also. And we are willing to do other things to please ourselves as well. So that shouldn't be the case. We have to come to a place of complete surrender, complete commitment. Uh, and the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verses 21 and 22, this is there in your notes, and I will read it out. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Okay, so uh, it's important for us to have a righteous life. So having looked at uh, all these keys uh, which form the foundation of the right kind of a prayer life, uh, I want to ask you, is there anything else you feel we should add to this? right foundation for prayer. Just have a look at that list and see if uh, any more can be added. Same for the online students, if you want to suggest any other keys. All right. Um, so if there aren't any new ones, I think it's good that we spend time on the ones which are given and try and build on that. So we can move on to the next chapter here, which is about the Lord Jesus. So something about um, you know studying the life of Jesus, because 
when you study the life of jesus you recognize that he is a pattern a model uh, of every good thing so when we talk about kindness we would say hey look at the life of jesus when you talk about compassion we'll say look at the life of jesus when you talk about love look at the life of jesus similarly when you talk about prayer he again becomes a model and our example um, and if there was one person who needed to be excused from a life of prayer it would be jesus because uh, he was the son of god so he walked with the sonship glory so uh, signs wonders miracles all of that in that sense uh, was attesting his life already okay so what is the need to pray when you're walking so powerfully what is the need to pray he could have avoided prayer he could have just said something and it would have happened so why was jesus praying one question to you why was jesus praying why, why do you think jesus was praying correct correct so he was being submissive to the father okay so that is a good answer uh, any other inputs here okay so there's a question here on chat it's already been answered thank you uh, jashin for that and uh, krisha to have a relationship with the father okay so submission is one and have a sub have a relationship is another one so prayer we've seen earlier it's not only about answer answers it's not only about you know god helping us tick off a list so prayer is submission to god prayer is also building our relationship with god so these are the reasons why jesus engaged in prayer and we recognize that his prayer life was um you know it it took up a lot of space in his life it took up a lot of his time so he would set aside time to pray so let's observe there are the scriptures listed in our notes here and each one suggests the kind of time that jesus set aside so in mark 135 we see that in the morning having risen a long while before daylight some of us have not even seen that part of the the day or the dawn but having risen a long while before daylight he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed so there is a discipline as far as his prayer is concerned he would wake up early in the morning go to a quiet place and spend time with the father that is the example of jesus okay so that's how he spent time in the mornings now let's see some more this is after ministry okay after ministry what happens mark 6 was 45 to 46 immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to bethsaida while he sent the multitude away and when he had sent them away he departed to the mountain to pray so it's very interesting just now jesus has had a nice meeting okay a crusade if you want to call it after the crusade what would we prefer to do you know if we have done the ministry we have led worship is so tired you want to go to corner house and eat an ice cream maybe right because you're like okay i can relax now but what did jesus do jesus sent everybody away and made time for prayer okay so that really shows us the kind of uh, prayer life he had it delighted him it was something he was looking forward to you know when you're exhausted you look forward to what you really like you know maybe some time at home to rest maybe something you like to eat but look at jesus he was delighting in the presence of the father so he makes time he sends everybody away he departed to the mountain to pray very intentional so he had planned it up you could say 
mornings he's already spending time with the father again after um, accomplishing his work he's making time to pray and spend time with the father let's continue you know you have uh, all all of this recorded in the different gospels so luke luke records in uh, chapter 5 was 15 and 16 however the report went around concerning him all the more and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed so seems like jesus had many places he went to the mountain to pray he went to the wilderness to pray so he had chalked out the you know quiet places around and luke records that even though crowds of people were coming or we could say ministry is going on so well for jesus what is his priority he goes to the wilderness and he prays okay so it's not just about uh what we are seeing happening in our lives okay in by that i mean you know sometimes we we make the statement god works in spite of our weaknesses you know we might see that ministry is happening well things are going on well why should i pray god is faithful right he gives us uh, the ministry of his holy spirit his word is powerful so you know all of that happens when we speak to people his word ministers to people but when we look at the life of jesus he even though everything was going on well he knew that it is important to spend time with the father so it's not so much about ministry alone you understand what i'm saying uh, but to build that relationship to build that strength in the presence of the father so he would spend time and sometimes you know even when we don't uh, pray or when we are disobedient god is still faithful a lot of things can happen but our spiritual life is not uh, measured by what we do what we accomplish you know even in terms of ministry and i think for us who are um, wanting to serve the lord it's a key for us to understand so don't go by everything is going well i don't have to pray you don't go by that instead always uh, put an emphasis on your own spiritual walk with the lord whether things are going well whether things are not going well i have to spend time with prayer in prayer okay because it's about my relationship with god it's not so much about i want my ministry to go well so you know i'm spending one hour i'm spending five hours for ministry that's not the equation okay when we are walking with the lord uh just as an outcome you will see that god is working through whatever you do so it should come as an outcome it should come as an overflow rather than you know just focusing on those matters and as you look at the life of jesus that's very clear even when lots of people were coming he could have thought how about you know i do one more crusade because multitudes have come or lots of people have come and i can do big things for god but still what does he do he sets time aside he leaves all of them he goes and he spends time with the father so it really shows us the importance that jesus placed on prayer okay uh, and uh, he enjoyed prayer he looked forward to prayer prayer was important to him uh, and and we can evaluate in our own lives whether prayer is like that for us or you know if prayer is uh, very tiring and uh, you know stressful okay so let's uh, follow along here we have the next verse luke 6 and verse 12 it says now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to god so look at that each person like mark's gospel luke's gospel they are recording different instances of prayer morning he prayed prayed on the mountain went to the wilderness and prayed and now what is he doing he is praying 
all night all night and we might wonder jesus isn't it enough like you finished your morning prayer why are you still praying in the night so prayer in the life of jesus was that important and if the son of god prayed so much what is our excuse okay and if he made so much time whose ministry i mean it, uh, everybody's ministry is important but as you uh, you know talk about the son of god we would think oh wow jesus your ministry is something extraordinary he gave time for the ministry but he also gave time for prayer right so it's not one or the other so these are all examples that you see in his life now john 6 and 15 the gospel of john let's see what he is saying he is saying therefore when jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king he departed again to the mountain by himself alone so uh, notice once again you know jesus was not interested you know in uh, like fame and the worldly achievements people wanted to make him king but that was not of interest so this happens to us when we walk with the lord and we are surrendered to him the things of god become more interesting than the things of the world so we see all of this in the life of jesus now what was the result of this what do you think was the result of such a prayerful life any observations from your um you know study of jesus's life what was the result in jesus's life so much prayer went in so yeah complete obedience to the father that's right anything else okay so krisha here she says anointing so there was more anointing on his life okay there's no prayer that went unanswered so um, 100% success right as far as his prayer life is concerned that's true yeah uh, any anything else that you observe okay um prabhu says successful neena says the most effective ministry jashin jesus was able to fulfill his purpose on earth yes right so uh, all this was possible only because of the way jesus surrendered himself in prayer okay so just think with me whenever jesus stepped out multitudes followed him when multitudes follow do you think we'll be able to predict what um, you know what requests they have it's very hard because they might come to us with a request for healing they might come to us with a request for um, deliverance they might come to us with a request for a miracle anything is possible and when people came to jesus do you ever see him praying long prayers or does he ever say okay i will give you appointment give me 3 days i will fast and pray i will come back to you and then i will pray with you we never see things like that in the life of jesus so in public what happens we only read he says be healed he stretched out his hand cast out the demon you know uh, so he gave an instruction okay you you pour uh, fill the jars with water he never really seems to be at that moment quickly go okay where is a quiet place i need to go and pray no because he has been in a relationship with the father so much that when the needs come his way sometimes he doesn't even pray sometimes you hear him say father you hear my prayers or i he gave thanks to the father and he broke the bread but in moments right so in in public in like everyday life as it unfolds you generally don't see him going away into long prayers 
but having prayed so much in personal prayer he comes out and does the work of god and it takes seconds it takes moments it takes minutes as opposed to you know hours and days so something very uh, uh, like interesting from jesus's life so as believers we can also spend personal time in prayer now uh, would people know about it like the other day you know when we were having our supernatural hour i remember uh, um uh, what was it someone was sharing and they said that uh, sometimes prayer seems boring okay i don't use that word in a uh, careless way but i mean to say that for our flesh it is a tough task to pray but just consider the life of jesus he put in so much time in prayer that his regular time was very effective okay uh, and therefore personal prayer life to build it up the way jesus had built up his personal prayer life is crucial for every believer now will people know will people applaud me and maybe you know sometimes uh, some people who pray a lot don't even share it we would never know oh how much prayer is brother john you know putting into his uh, how much of time does he put into prayer we don't know how much time is sister suzy putting in prayer we don't know right so when a ministry like prayer or you know personal time in prayer is not seen by people it's very difficult for our flesh because it's easier to stand here and preach what happens people might appreciate or you know stand here and sing people will appreciate but when it comes to prayer nobody may notice it but when we study the life of jesus there the understanding we get is it has much value it's not so much to get the applause of man but to really walk powerfully in our life we need to have a strong personal prayer life and it's worth the struggle right when it comes to um, gaining that interest in prayer setting time aside fighting for that time uh, in prayer it really you know makes complete sense so uh, that's the manner in which you know we we see jesus give importance to prayer okay um i'm looking at some of the comments here so uh, krisha says i have restrictions at home it gets very difficult for me to pray for long hours as my parents aren't uh, christians what to do in such a situation okay we will uh, come to personal prayer time and how to build a strong personal prayer time but as of now what i would say is we'll have to carve out time krisha so that um how to carve out time for yourself is your call because you're the best person who can assess you know all the tasks and the priority of those tasks and based on that you decide you know what is it that i can give up or what is it that i can reduce and how can i make more time for prayer okay so in instances where um making time there's a lot of work and making time for prayer is difficult this is my personal um, uh, opinion i feel like maybe early hours in the morning are very helpful um, and for some people maybe once everyone completes you know, their daily task uh, in the night it it is possible to spend time in prayer and i'm reminded of uh, the example of uh, susanna wesley okay so some of you will know susanna wesley the mother of uh, uh, john Wesley who is one of those main persons as far as the methodist movement is concerned so susanna wesley was a very busy mother so you know she had uh, children and she had to take care of the children uh, but she was also a very prayerful mother 
okay who had an impact on the lives of her sons she was so busy that you know how she would make time for prayer there wasn't even time to go separately and sit there because she has to take care of the children she would just put a scarf on her head and that was her prayer closet so the kids will be playing she'll just put a, a scarf on her head and go into prayer so that's the way she maintained her prayer life and she maintained it really strong being a busy mother you know of uh, uh, children so i think when we talk about busyness it's it's a reality but each one of us have to work out in our own personal lives how we are going to carve out that time for prayer so it's your call you decide what you can um, you know eliminate or reduce to make that time okay i hope that helps uh, krisha any follow up uh, question to that okay sure thank you all right so in this manner uh, you know jesus prayed uh, as we look at john 11 okay john 11 which is given in our notes here verses 41 to 42 it's the time when jesus um prays before the tomb of lazarus okay so as i told us when we encounter a very difficult scenario we feel oh i should pray more but not so in the case of jesus how did he um minister in this situation you know he just said father i thank you that you have heard me i thank you that you have heard me lazarus come forth finished the dead man came back to life so uh when we have a powerful prayer life things happen in the natural okay and that is the example that jesus gave us i i like to uh, look at it as the iceberg okay uh, i know that we've not seen an iceberg mostly you know this part of um the yeah where, where we live but you are aware of what an iceberg is okay so an i iceberg is that you see um frozen ice on top of the the water surface and you think that that is how much the ice is but when you look underneath you have a, a really huge mass of ice you know sitting there and so for ships and for sailors you know they instruct them to be very careful as you're moving towards the iceberg so when it comes to our prayer lives this is how it should be though we pray somewhat in public our personal prayer life should be like that mass under water that nobody will maybe you'll never talk about it nobody will ever come to know but we have to develop that kind of a prayer life that's when you know you can walk in power the way jesus walked he called a dead man to come forth and he came forth okay so here in our next section we also see that jesus never experienced failure in prayer why do you think why didn't jesus experience any failure in prayer yes how did he get there yes he developed a strong relationship with god and that's how when he knew what god wanted he prayed that and that's what he got every time okay great so he had a strong relationship with god he uh, had the knowledge of his will what else how did he have such a successful yeah good yes so he believed so his heart had come to a place of belief in god that's right that's great anything else that you see he prayed with authority yes great yeah what else he never had failure in prayer why did jesus have failure in prayer because hmm okay okay so again he prayed in the will of god 
uh, prayed in the will of God, he prayed in faith. So everything happened. Correct. Good. Yes. Anything, Vimal? By faith. Okay. Great. So uh, most of the answers here are will of God, faith. So that is the reason why uh, Jesus never experienced failure. Was there any time when Jesus prayed outside the will of God? Yes. Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. So it was a very difficult time uh, in uh, you know Jesus's life uh, where he did not want to experience separation from the Father and the pain. Uh, but even that prayer that he says, okay, Father, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. What does he say in the end? But not my will, but yours be done. So even when he feels that something else should happen, he still surrendered, submitted to the will of the Father. And, you know, God did that. God did his will. And he had to go up to the cross. So uh, this is how the prayer life of Jesus was very surrendered to the Father. And Nina here uh, says that he always did things that please the Father. And in John's Gospel, he says, I know you always hear me. Okay, So he was that connected to the Father. And Viku says, because he knew who God is. OK, wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for your answers. Uh, we will take a short break now, and we will come back to continue with the rest of the portions. So just want to request the online students to please stay on the call. Uh, just go on mute, and uh, you can turn off your cameras. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 